Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're talking about Kaladin Stormbless, the character from Brandon Sanderson's Way of Kings. Now, The Way of Kings is an amazing epic fantasy, so if you're looking for some escape, and if you haven't already, I really recommend picking this book up and starting on this series. Now, Kaladin Stormbless is a really interesting character to talk about. Uh, because he is kind of a sensitive figure growing up in a world of war and horrible storms and basically hostility, prejudice and discrimination all over. So Kaladin is really interesting in a sense uh, growing up uh, because he is raised by a father with a very strong sense of idealism and a very strong sense of honor. His father has high expectations for him, wanting him to grow up and become a successful doctor, or rather surgeon. And, and so this is kind of interesting, to have a character growing up, developed to be a surgeon, to put in a world of war and epic fantasy like this. So I think why people really like Kaladin's arc and Kaladin's storyline is because he really depicts what it's like to live with depression, high expectations, and uh, with, uh, what you say, a fear of uh, failure and a fear of loss. Kaladin is a character with a very high sense of responsibility. That means he wrestles constantly this feeling that he is responsible for the well-being and safety of everyone around him. He grows up believing that he has to be solely responsible for everyone else and their lives. That means he believes that if anyone dies or if he loses anybody, it is because he wasn't strong enough, he wasn't good enough, he failed them. And having this high sense of honor and high sense of responsibility is his strength and his weakness. Because we see throughout the story how crippled he is, how scarred he is by his loss and by his uh, trauma and by his uh, failures of the past. Kaladin is a character who over and over gets to see people he loves and cares for die. And it is his compassion that is his greatest down downfall because he cannot help but care for the well-being of other people and he cannot help but become invested in other people's yearnings. That means he takes on everyone else and he cares for and has compassion for everyone else, a deep, irrational compassion for other people, often at the behest of his own needs. Kaladin is an interesting character because he shows us what it's like to constantly put yourself in second place. He constantly puts the needs of other people before his own. Sometimes pulling himself into a very dark place because as he does, as he gives and gives and gives and protects and protects and protects, he becomes smaller and smaller, darker and darker, heavier and heavier. He becomes so tense, so serious, so intense. His energy scares other people at times. Kaladin is really an epic character because despite all this, despite his depression, despite the dark place he is in, despite the burden he carries on his shoulders, he keeps on fighting, keeps on living, keeps on surviving throughout the odds. This, this arc is something to read if you want to read about and hear about somebody who lives throughout all odds. And I think what really is interesting about Kaladin and uh, what really nails him down as an intuitive character is his unconventional way of solving problems. Kaladin is a surgeon true and true, but he is also a warrior and he is a person that is able to carry both these two threads on his arms. That means he is able to come up with pretty ingenious solutions to keeping people alive, but different battle formations, new strategies, new methods, just to make sure that everyone can work together at the best of each other's, relying on each other's, depending on each other's. He is able to keep people alive, and that's his main goal, to keep people alive, to keep his battalion safe, to keep his men at arms, his comrades in good spirits. And in this, he is, quick to teach people surgical methods. He teaches people uh, the way of the doctor and how to treat wounds and how to handle different injuries at the battlefield. And he does this uh, 
uh, really rounding out what it is to fight. You know, it's not just about fighting, it's not just about beating other people, but it's also about keeping each other alive. And uh, that desire to protect other people is probably the most interesting thing about him. That's his key theme throughout his whole story. So, when thinking about Kaladin, the first thing you want to think about, the first thing you want to notice or is how he wrestles his inability to be there for everyone. He takes responsibility for everyone around him, but he cannot accept failure, he cannot accept loss. He cannot accept that he is not able to save everyone. He almost has this uh, desire for power in order to protect other people and he desires power in order to keep other people alive he wishes he dreams that he was god that he could keep people alive that he could prevent everything that he could uh, think of every option every possibility that he could see the future that he could know what was going to happen that he could prepare for things that he could uh, handle situations better he glosses over every miss everything he should have thought of every uh, eventuality that he should have foreseen. He glosses over, you know, his inability to account for everyone. He is so focused on this bigger picture, this whole broad scope, every single person around him, every person in his uh, team, everyone in his family, that uh, every single person matters and every single person is important. He is sensitive and brooding in many ways and he keeps on uh, holding these small failures, these uh, individual problems above his head as deeper scars. And he often goes on these streaks where he just wallows in self-pity, where he just uh, uh, feels there is no point, no purpose. Why should I go on? Why should I keep fighting? I will just keep losing people. No matter what I do, I will just keep losing others. So it's very hard for him to see the good he does in the world. He cannot relax, he cannot enjoy life, he cannot l let himself uh, be at ease, he cannot celebrate victories, he cannot be happy at the end of a battle because he cannot stop thinking about the people he lost on the way. Every single person lost, every failure, every small piece, it becomes something that eats at him and at some point this will bring him very dark, it will bring him to the point of near suicide uh, it will bring him to the point where he just doesn't want to keep living. So uh, it's a two-edged sword he carries because his responsibility makes him prepare. It makes him stronger. It makes him keep fighting. It makes him uh, really work harder. And uh, it really gets him to push himself to his limits. But it also gets him to his limits and to the point of almost breaking, to the point of almost losing everything. Now, when you look at uh, Kaladin's character and I type Kaladin as an INFJ, an introverted, intuitive, feeling and judging type. Uh, well, you see that uh, first he has this uh, introverted temperament. He's very self-composed. He controls everything about himself. He never lets his emotions take control. He always uh, carefully uh, whips himself to not act out of anger, to not act out of hate, to constantly put what's best above his own feelings. So he's constantly trying to control his own emotions and his own feelings and his own experiences. At the same time, he is a person who is generally quite quiet and quite composed. He doesn't share much with other people. He doesn't uh, like to talk about himself. He isn't cocky. He doesn't brag. He doesn't uh, uh, take over in a group. But he still finds himself to the position of becoming a leader for other people. Because he has such a high sense of responsibility, other people just want to depend on him. He becomes people's protector and so people uh, seek shelter under his arms. People just naturally gravitate to him, wanting him to be their protector, uh, coming to him for advice, coming for him, to him for counsel. And because he's quite a non-judgmental character, a person who is open to everyone, a person who accepts everyone, a person who lets everybody work under his banner, um, he also gets people to trust him very easily. It's very easy to trust in Kaladin and to think that he is going to save me, he's going to protect me, he's going to keep me safe. And everyone has this feeling about him. So everybody else sees him as a savior and a protector and somebody who has kept him alive. Everyone else um, respects him and admires him and sees him as an ideal. 
And in many ways, he is an ideal and he feels he has to be an ideal for other people. You can see he thrives on and really seeks to put on and to be an ideal for other people. And this is something I've noticed is very common for INFJs. INFJs, they just want to act like this perfect image, this model of responsibility and honor and justice and goodness for other people. So he wants to be this kind of symbol of hope and of fighting and of keeping on and of uh, uh, putting what's best for everyone before oneself. And that's um, something that's very uplifting. So if you are an INFJ and you want to think and have that recognized in yourself, this is a character you want to look at and this is an arc you really want to study. That means, yeah, I can really recommend this book and I can really recommend this story. And I can tell you, you're in for a lot because there's four books out already and more on the way. So uh, you can have a lot of amazing experiences and you're going to see a lot of interesting perspectives and interpretations of the INFJ lifestyle and what it is to be an INFJ reading this book. Anyways, uh, I want to say thank you all for watching this character analysis and let me know in the comments down below what you think of Kaladin and what you think of his story and what you think about The Way of Kings. Now, go watch the book, go love the story just as much as I did. Thank you all for watching and see me in the next video.